Listener David asks a question that's often on people's minds. Uh, I finally took the plunge and purchased a DS420+. Plus. I also bought uh, three Seagate 12 terabyte drives and configured them in Synology Hybrid RAID. The plan is to use this Synology to store photos and documents, host my video and audio connection collections using Plex, and create a time machine portal for my MacBook Pro. Uh, my question is, first of all, do I need more memory? Yes. And secondly, what are the things that I should do now that I've got this? What are the first steps to take now that I've got this disk station? And I would say that, the, the, I mean, the first step is to do what you've done. Plug your drives in, plug the disk station in, let it go through the setup process, get rolling. And then I would pick one thing per day. And you may slow this down to one thing per week and start peeling back the layers of that app. So what, whatever your most important use case is, and it might be backup, which sounds boring, but you know, we all know I would, I would get that set up, go through it. You know, I I've often said the Venn diagram between Synology or even just NAS owner and novice user doesn't have a lot of overlap. There is a connection there. And the connection is if you're in the novice user group and you buy a NAS, you will very quickly be in the not novice user group anymore. It's not that they're difficult to use. It's that there are a lot of layers to this and it gets really fun and you're going to wind up diving in and getting involved in stuff. And you want to give yourself the time to get involved in the, the nuances of each of these things that you set up because, you know, as we talked about at the beginning of the episode, you know, we all have a laundry list of things that we do with these things. That was not the case on day one. This is a process. I'm always adding new things to it. And the nice part is it's, it's built to be a server. So once you get something up and running, you kind of forget about it in that you don't have to administer it anymore. You keep using the feature, but the administration of it, it, you know, you have this huge peak of time that you need right up front to get it rolling. And then, you know, and then it tapers off over the next couple of days or a week as you tweak it and like, oh, I didn't want it to work that way. I wanted to do this way. Okay, well, fine, I'll do that. So I would, I would start and I would do this in series, not in parallel necessarily. I mean, eventually you'll have it all in parallel, but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that would be my advice to this is pick the most important thing and do it and then pick the next thing and do it. I don't know. Jeff, what I, do you think? I, I think that's great advice. And, uh, uh, <laughs> it saves you from getting overwhelmed. You know, you yeah. figure out the one thing you, you get it smoothed out and working the way you want. And now you can move on to the next thing. But see, the thing is when you finish working through that first thing, you might realize that there's something else that should be a higher priority now. So it's much easier to reorganize that priority list. If you're only working on one thing at a time, as opposed to trying to jump between like five different configuration setups for all these different features. And by the time you think you're done, you're just frustrated. You're just frustrated. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and you don't actually really know what's going on because you, you never had the time to really focus on, on each thing individually. The one piece of advice I would start with is don't start with Docker. That is going to be the first time you set up a, a Docker container. That's a whole different world. And, and what Docker does is it unlocks the capabilities of your disk station beyond that which packages have been built for. Most of the stuff we've, in fact, all of the stuff we've talked about are packages that you install like apps on your iPhone. You go into Package Center on Synology, which is in the web interface. You click you tell it to install it and boom, it's there. And there's a graphical interface to set it all up. Docker has gotten better, but what Docker is, is just a, let's treat it like another package manager. And it's a weird one. So just don't start there unless you already know Docker from, you know, from a past life or something, then obviously, you know, you, you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, but I, I would, I would get familiar with the way your disk station works first before you learn this new language of Docker um, and YouTube videos are going to be your friend on, on, on that. So 
that's that's the only advice. 